and hope you enjoy your plans. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today on Eclipse Day. And we are here to learn all about polymer clay jewelry making for beginners. So if you have never made a piece of jewelry in your life, if you have never worked with polymer clay, this is the right class for you. We're going to teach you all of the basic techniques that you need to know to start creating with polymer clay today. So we're going to be going over basics like different kinds of polymer clay, how to bake it for how long, how to design with it, how to use cutters, and how to do some extra special things that we're going to throw in there in today's class. But again, for beginners. So to start, we're going to look at the projects that we're going to be making. My name is Stephanie Menor, and I'm your teacher today. So let's switch to the top-down camera. And what we are making today is an assortment of earrings, but we're going to show you ways that you can take what you've made in polymer clay and turn it into either an earring or a charm or a pin or a barrette or a necklace pendant. So, you know, the, the possibilities are endless when you are creating something custom just for you. So we're going to show you all of those customization options, how to do each one and what supplies you're going to need to be able to do that. Um, so these are the earrings that we're making. Some of them are super simple. This is the, this is the easiest one that we have here. Um, and this certain ones are made with clay that already has the pattern in it. So we're going to get into that in a few minutes. We're going to show you what the difference is. Um, and then a lot of these we've actually, you can see the shiny coating. It's on top of there. So we've actually added a shiny coating on top. We'll tell you how to do that and what products we used. So let me just move these out of the way and let's start to talk about the supplies that you're gonna need. Um, if you are crafting along with us today, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, first, on my table, I have a silicone mat and this just protects my work surface and make sure that I don't mess up my desk here. Um, then I have this, which is a piece of tile from the hardware store. And this is a ceramic tile that is smooth. You can see shiny, it's reflecting my lights there. But this is perfectly smooth and shiny. And this is what I like to craft on and what I like to bake on. So I bake my clay directly on here. And we'll talk very in depth about all of that. Um, the clay itself, obviously you guys are familiar with solid color polymer clay. This particular kind is sold in the jewelry making department at Michael's. So everything that we're doing, just about 100% of what supplies we're using are in the jewelry making department of Michael's. So this is a special polymer clay that is sold there. It comes in solids like you're familiar with, but it also comes in patterns. And this is the new kind of technology that's available in polymer clay right now, where those patterns are already in the clay. And so it takes a lot of the legwork out of working with the clay itself. Instead of buying seven, 10 different colors of clay, you buy one thing and the hard part of it is already done for you. Lots and lots of different patterns available. So this one is like a stone, kind of like a malachite, semi-precious stone pattern. There's everything from stripe patterns. Some of them have foil in them. Some of them are swirly patterns. Um, lots and lots of fun patterns for you to choose from. Like I said, jewelry making department at Michael's. Um, the next thing we have is an assortment of jewelry tools. Um, so these are, let me find, where is my, um, so these are double-sided jewelry tools, I have some errant clay there, um, plastic jewelry tools, we have a sharp one, I also have an X-Acto knife, we're going to be using that for a couple of the techniques, I also have a little hand drill that we're going to use to poke holes, um, you may also need like a wood stick that has a sharp point on it and um, a clay cutter. This is my cutter here, which has cornstarch all over it, but this is my cutter. This is a very sharp blade. Um, I do have a little thing of cornstarch 
And cornstarch is what we use with our cutters. Here are the cutters that we use. These are sold. Um, they look like something like this. You get several. This one has six different cutters available. I'm actually going to bring this up just a little bit while we do this. And so this is what some of the individual cutters look like. They have a very sharp cutting edge on this side, but then like a place to press for your fingers here. I have some glue. Loctite super glue is what we use. And then this is what we're going to use as a top coat. This is UV resin. I'm going to talk to you all about this product if you're not familiar with it um, and show you how to make your creation shiny if you want it to have a shiny look. Um, some other little goodies that I'll be <laughs> introducing throughout the class. Um, but let's just jump in and get started here. And I'm actually going to get started with this clay. Um, this is the earring that we're making. And this was created with a bright color pattern that has all of these colors already in it. And I have an example of this right here. So this earring was made with this clay. You know what? Let's go ahead and use that one. And so this is how it looks in stores. I'm just going to go ahead and open this right up. Inside are some instructions. And then the clay itself is in this little acetate box. And don't throw this away. Make sure you keep this. This is how I like to store my clay. Here's the clay itself. It is wrapped in plastic. So we want to try to keep... Um, keep it not getting dry. Here, I just took that off. And here is the clay. So you can see that that pattern goes all the way through the clay. It's not just a surface pattern or a paint or, you know, anything on, on the top of there. It is, is actual clay that is made by artisans. And they're doing the hard work here so that we can do the fun stuff, which is designing with it. So I put my clay directly on my ceramic tile. If you don't have a ceramic tile, that's okay. You can just use any flat surface. You will need to transfer what you do to a baking sheet. And we'll get into all that. But first, I am going to grab my roller, which is, is around here. It is definitely around here. Ah, here it is. Okay. <laughs> so this is my acrylic roller. This one is hollow. They sell them um, solid as well. And this is, you know, this is a little bit of a beginner tool set, but that's, it has exactly what you need to get started. So I just put some cornstarch on here. Um, I like to do that. You can also put some cornstarch on your roller. Just just make sure we won't stick. And then you can go straight into rolling. Um, oh, I forgot one other tool. I want to show you this because these are cool. These are thickness guides. These are 4.5 mm. I can put those on either side. Also, 3 mm comes in, in the um, package when you buy it. You get two of them. So two different thicknesses. And it's just like when you're rolling out a pie crust, you want to roll it out so that it's even. And so these thickness guides help you do that. If I didn't have the thickness guides here, what might happen is, you know, I'm right-handed. So my right hand is going to press down harder, probably, than my left hand. And so then it would get uneven. But having thickness guides there helps you roll it out to a specific thickness, but also ensures that it is that thickness throughout the whole slab. Okay, so that is a really cool tool for you. Now, if you are into polymer clay, if you have done it before, you may have some fancy tools. You may have a pasta machine um, that can absolutely work with this clay, uh, but we are showing you the manual way. All right, so I've just rolled that out and I'm ready to go in and cut it. So let me bring my cornstarch. And I'm going to use this teardrop cutter. Just put in a little bit. Oops, you couldn't see that because my hand was in the way. Let's do it this way. Dip that in some cornstarch. And then I want to find the pattern where I want to cut. Um, so I'm looking through and I want to find a spot that has all the colors together. And I think this is a good spot. And just press down. 
Press down all the way, making sure you've got all the sides pressed down and then lift straight back up. And we can fill the rest of this up with shapes. Um, let's see, let's, let's put a shape right there. You wanna keep in mind these are earrings, so you want the pattern somewhat to match and lift that straight up. Now, of course, I can create, I can fill all of the rest of this with cut out shapes. If I don't wanna do that, actually I can take my blade and just cut off this bottom portion. This top portion, I can save for another time. So I mentioned earlier to save the packaging that this comes in. It's like a little box. And I can put that back in there. I actually have a shoe box where I keep these so I can kind of rifle through them and pull a little piece of clay. Now that's not to say that the rest of this clay is gonna get wasted. I'll show you how to reuse the clay. But for now, we just weed out this clay that we don't need. And because we're working on this smooth surface, you can see that it weeds pretty easily. I might have to get a tool in there to get this little bit out. Um, but it pretty much releases very easily when you're working on a tile. And if I wanted to, I can take an old paintbrush and kind of get rid of that. That cornstarch can stay there in the oven. Then I can take a sharp tool, kind of just clean up, clean up around the edges. But again, not necessary. You can do these parts after you bake. All right, so those are actually ready to go in the oven. I have my leftover clay here, which I just put in a ball, and I will come back to this at the end of the class and show you what to do with this so that you don't waste any. But this is ready to bake. And the great thing about working on ceramic is that I can just pick this whole thing up and put it in my oven. Um, so polymer clay is an oven baked clay. So we have to bake it. It's at a low temperature, it's 250 degrees, but we do wanna bake it for 20 minutes. And um, when the clay is baked, here's a piece of baked clay. It comes out very, very flexible. Um, so it shouldn't be brittle at all after a baking time. If you find that your clay is a little bit brittle, it probably just means that next on your next batch, cook it five minutes longer. Usually brittle clay means that it hasn't baked enough, not that it's baked too much. All right, so these are ready to go into the oven. And let's pretend that I did that. And I'm just gonna move this to the side right now. And I'm gonna bring in some pieces that I have already baked. These are of a different pattern. So these heart shapes, came from a clay piece that looks like that with little flowers and such, like little confetti. And here's my clay, flexible. You can see how thick it is. This is probably about three and a half to four mm thick. And now I wanna turn these into earrings. And so to do that, here's my um, example. This is the teardrop example. Um, so to turn these into earrings, I do need to make a hole right here. We just need a single hole at the top of our earring, and that allows us to place this thing, which is a jump ring, through the hole, and then that allows us to put our earring back on there, okay? So I decide where I want that hole to be. Do I want the heart earring to have a hole here? Or do I want it to be to the side and have a hole here? I kind of like the offset um, heart. So this is that's where I'm going to put my hole. To create those, you need a little hand drill. Now, before I even do that, I should tell you that you can create holes before you bake. Let me slide this back in here. I can create a hole using a sharp tool right here. Kind of press that in and wiggle it around gently before that goes into the oven and that will create a hole for you. But here's why I don't like doing that. Number one, it's harder to control 
the size of that hole and the consistency of it. You'll find that once you bake this and lift this off, off of the porcelain, that the back of that hole is gonna be small and the front is really big. So I like to make my earring holes uh, after they bake. So that's why I like to use this drill. But if you don't have a drill, that is okay. You can make the holes before you bake them. Um, and if you don't have a little hand drill, if you have a motorized drill that works just as well, but it only takes a few seconds with one of these hand drills. So you situate it in your hand so that, that this is the swivel part and then find where you want this to go. I want mine to be right there and just start twisting. And just within a few seconds, I've already gotten through that whole earring. You can see, and now come back. And that creates a hole right there. You might have to clean it up a little bit. There you go. Uh, sometimes what I do is I go through it twice, once from the back, once from the front. That just helps to get rid of that excess clay through there. But now you have a clean hole right through there. All right, so I want to add a jump ring. This is the piece that I need here. Um, I see a question in the chat, thank you, asking about this hand drill. This is sold at Michael's uh, in the jewelry making department. Um, actually, there's a whole section in the jewelry making department that has UV resin, which is the product we're gonna talk about here in a few minutes. And this hand drill is sold in the UV resin section. If you have any questions, please do ask them in the chat. I love to see it. And Stephanie, I actually just put that link for that drill in the chat. Awesome. If anyone's looking for it. Thank you. Thank you, Felicia. All right. So let's get back to this earring here. So now you have to add certain pieces to get it to work as an earring. Um, and the basic parts of it are a jump ring and an ear wire. And this is a traditional ear wire. There are lots of different ear wires out there, but this is sort of the most traditional kind. You will need some jewelry tools. Um, so something like this, a little like um, needle nose plier. This is another kind of round nose plier. And you hold the jump ring with two pliers on either side of the brake. See, there's a brake in the jump ring right up there. It's probably hard to see on camera, but I situate the pliers there and I pull one plier toward me, one plier away from me. So it opens like a spring. And that's what I feed through here. And before I close that jump ring, I wanna use that opportunity to put my here. Okay. Um, question on the oven. So let me cover that. Uh, I bake my clay in my regular conventional oven, 250 degrees, 20 minutes. And that produces a great result for me. I have also baked it in a toaster oven, 250, 20 minutes. It doesn't change the time or the temperature. Um, just you want to watch it, especially if it's your first time baking in an oven because ovens can be inconsistent with the temperature, the actual temperature that's inside. So if this is an oven that you baked in a lot of times, you know if it runs hot, if it runs cold, if there's hot or cold spots. So just keep that in mind um, for baking of polymer clay. But yeah, toaster oven, conventional oven, um, you do not, it won't work in a microwave or anything. I've never tried that. I think it would just turn into goop. So. <laughs> So yeah, conventional oven or toaster oven. All right, so here we have our first earring and it is um, in the natural coating. This is what how the, uh, the clay gets baked. It's like a matte finish, but we want to add a shiny finish. So let me show you first the difference between matte and shiny. 
So here are some pieces that I baked. This is how it comes out of the oven. This is the matte finish. This is our shiny finish that we've added. You can see it when I go like this. And that shiny finish is just um, a design aspect. It does not, you don't have to make it shiny. You can leave it matte. It's a great look. Um, but if you like the shiny look, this is the product that you're gonna need. It's called UV resin. This is hard type UV resin sold in the jewelry making department of Michaels. You're gonna need this. You're gonna need a UV lamp that looks like this. And you're gonna need like a toothpick or something to spread it. So I'm gonna show you that process. Um, as I do, I'll tell you a little bit about UV resin. So UV resin is a clear liquid that you pour out. And I'm gonna bring you guys in a little bit to see this better. If I can, come on. All right, old fashioned way. Let's bring you in this way. Oh, I don't wanna bump that. Okay, so here is the UV resin. And I'm just gonna put a little bit on top of there, just a dot and a toothpick or a wood stick. I'm gonna use that to move it to the edges. UV resin is, uh, like I said, it, it cures in UV light. So it is not gonna harden until you expose it to UV light. And that UV light can be in the form of a lamp that you plug in, or it can be in the form of sunlight. Um, so if I would take this outside and it's sunny outside, it will harden, it will cure. So you can see, I'm just kind of like bringing that to the edges. And now I'm gonna bring my lamp in, hit that button. You can see the lights come on. This is a nine watt UV lamp. This is um, powered by USB. So you plug it into any USB port. And it, I'm kind of keeping it to the side just so that you can see what's happening under there while, while it's going, but you can see that it is on. This lamp runs for a minute. And when you're doing a coating like this, I recommend two minutes just to make sure that is coated on there. Um, and this is our preferred method of adding a shiny coating. Um, this looks especially beautiful in the next project that we're gonna be doing, which involves metal. So I'll show you that as that goes. So let me, let me I'm gonna move this to the side and I'm gonna let this keep going. And again, this is a silicone mat. UV resin does not stick to silicone. So um, this mat is perfect for that. I did get a little bit of resin, which I'm just gonna kind of clean up here. Um, it always is nice to have a paper towel on the side. So you can kind of clean that up, okay? All right, and we'll show you the results of that as soon as it is done. You know, let me just go ahead and turn it off. So here you can see that shiny coat that we got. And here's our before and after. So it's just a little bit of a different look. And I can kind of, uh, this was kind of stuck in place. So I moved that. So now that's able to swing again. And that's our first earring. That is sort of the very basic of how to create an earring with polymer clay. All right, so let's move on to the next one. Move this off to the side. Okay, so the next two earrings, actually, you know what, let's do another one. This one is very simple. This uses a pre-existing charm, 
where we added a um, an earring topper is what I call this as an earring topper. But these charms, have you guys seen the charms at Michael's? They are like too cute lately. I want to buy all of them. This is one of them. These little um, like globe charms that are filled with stuff. Some of them are filled with pearls. This one's filled with little confetti stars. These are so fun um, because you can base your design off of the colors in that charm. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to make this one out of old clay, uh, leftover clay, I should say. Let me get that. Good morning. There we go. All right, so I, I told you earlier that I wanted to show you how to use up leftover clay. So these are just some leftover pieces that I had from another project. They're different colors, um, but I'm going to mush them together. And so this process that I'm showing you right now, this is called conditioning of, of clay. And when you're working with solid colors of clay, conditioning is really the first step. Um, when you're working with pattern clay, conditioning isn't something that we do because if we conditioned this, all the colors would just mush together. Um, so you'll notice that in that first earring, I didn't do any conditioning, but this is really a, a very, very important step in working with solid polymer clay. It softens the clay, it makes it malleable, warms it up, and it allows you to just create more easily with it. So you can see those two colors that I mixed have made a very pretty mauvey lavender color here. And I'm gonna bring out my my thing here, let's move these. This is that same porcelain tile. You can see it's just a tiny little piece of clay. And you have to be careful because clay will transfer. So you always want to take the time to clean up your work surface. If you have any little bits of clay on it, it's going to transfer to your new clay and give you some maybe unwanted effects in there or dots of another color. Okay, so here's our conditioned clay. I'm using a tiny little piece of it on purpose just to show you how you can reuse clay. Um, so I'm going to put a tiny little bit of cornstarch on the top of that. I'm going to roll this out. Okay. And then I can go in with a cutter that I'm dipping in cornstarch. Weed out the parts that I don't want. And that is ready to bake. So I'm basically just making a little dot of clay. All right, so that is ready to bake. Let's pretend that we do that. Send that away. And once again, we are gonna pretend here with our other heart. So this is already baked. And um, in this earring, I'm gonna take this charm, pull that off of the card. And I want to situate it so that this is the earring top and this is the earring bottom. So in this case, I need a hole here at the bottom. So I bring in that hand drill, place it and twist. And twist it in the opposite motion to get that out. There we go. So I can connect that here. Now, in this case, I want to show you a different way of creating the top of the earring. So instead of adding, uh, you know, one of these type of things, because I feel like that, oh, darn, darn it, sorry, sorry about that. Um, instead of adding this to the top of that, 
because I don't like the look of it. I want to make this a more of a stud earring. So I want this part to have a stud. And that stud finding is looks like this. And um, you know what? Let me show you here. When you buy them in store, they look like this. It's called earring posts. And we can simply glue that using glue, and that's how we can create a stud earring. So here's the glue that we like to do. It's uh, I use Loctite super glue. This one is the gel kind. They have sort of a regular kind. I prefer the gel just because it. Uh, I feel like I can control when I when I put it out on my piece. So here is the Loctite. I just need a little. I'm, I'm getting down to the bottom of this glue here, so I think I need to buy a new one. Hopefully we can get a little bit out. Oh no! Oh, I think my glue has lived its last. Oh wait, there comes some. There we go. All right, put that on the shopping list for Michaels. Okay, here's our finding. And we just glue it on. We do want to wait for that to fully dry. That is how we can turn the top of this into a stud earring. Okay. And then I'm going to wait for that to dry, but then we can connect both of these with a jump ring. So let's put this to the side until this dries. And we'll finish that up a little bit later. Okay, moving along, let me see what time it is. Yes, moving along. So the next, this is a totally new technique in these next two earrings, which actually use the same technique. One is a stud earring, and one is this dangly hexagon-shaped earring here. They use the same technique of, and you'll notice that they have a metal frame. So here we're using a bezel, that's what the frame is called, Here's a bezel um, to make these earrings. And they work so wonderfully with polymer clay, but these are sold in the UV resin section. Here is an earring bezel. So we used a round one to make this one. This is the hexagon shape. And this is what it looks like when you buy it. This is a cute earring just to use on its own, just to wear it like that, but you can customize it. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we're actually going to start with this hexagon. Bring my work surface here. Here's that little dot that I made earlier. Let me show you how to transfer this. If you don't have, if you're not baking it on the same surface that you're making it on, you want to use a flat um, blade and make it uh, perpendicular to your surface and scooch it under there. Scooch it right under there. And that's how you can pick it up, transfer it to another surface that way. And let's just clean that up a little here. All right, we're gonna use this clay. Let me open this up. And let's open up the wrapper. And again, that pattern goes all the way through. I like to put a little bit of cornstarch just to make sure that this is not gonna stick. But here I have my roller. I'm rolling it out to my desired thickness. These start at about five millimeters deep. And um, the thickness of the earring that you make is up to you. Um, I prefer it to be around the three millimeter thickness. So I do want to thin this out so much, somewhat. And you can go sideways too, not just up and down. And you know, the patterns, they will distort slightly. So if that's bothering you, that's kind of stretching this way, we can go inside to side. Uh, 
Okay, so here is my bezel. This is just a jewelry frame. These are sold, again, in the jewelry making department at Michael's. There's lots of different shapes and sizes. Um, this one's more of like a pendant size. This one's a little bit more of a charm size. They do come in a lot of different shapes. And we kind of use this as a cutter at the same time. So we want to lay this on our clay, find a good spot for it. All right, I like that. And then you want to use a tool. I've been using um, my pliers and sort of the end of my pliers to press it down. You want to press this into the clay. And then I'm going to, I'm actually going to cut the clay here, move all of this, store that, and I can cut this away too. And here's where I want to get my X-Acto knife out. That's how we're going to get these cuts around it using an X-Acto knife. We're just weeding out all of that extra clay that we don't need. And we can kind of press that down again. You see, as the more that I press it down, the more that the front kind of puffs up in there. Oh, that might happen, but that's okay. Just keep going. All right, and then I can go in with my X-Acto again, clean this up around the edges. It does not need to be perfect because we are going to have an opportunity to clean this up after we bake it. All right, and so now I have all my little shrapnel <laughs> of clay. Easiest way to pick that up is with another piece of clay. All right, and because I'm making this on um, a ceramic tile, this can go into the oven just like that. I don't need to mess with this or touch it or transfer it to anything. It can just bake exactly as is. And here's the one that I baked earlier. So the projects that we're using today are mostly made with these bright colors. Um, but the clay also comes in a lot of neutrals as well. This is one pattern, this sort of black and white stone pattern that I love, and it is a neutral. So this one came out of the oven. It is cooled, and you can take your um, X-Acto knife and just kind of clean up along the back here. If you see any areas that need it. You can kind of just scrape along there. Okay. But that is what it looks like. And let's bring out our example. Here's our example. So you'll see in our example, number one, that we have used the UV resin to make it a shiny top coat. And then we did put a uh, drill hole here to accommodate this jump ring. Um, how long should we bake it? So this goes in a 250 degree oven for 20 minutes. That for me is the magical number to get perfect clay every time. All right, so I think what I'm going to do first is drill, drill that hole. 
So here I do want to make sure that I find. Now you will find when you bake these in a bezel, sometimes it will separate. And I feel this one wants to. Yeah. Sometimes it'll separate. If that happens, you can reassemble it with a little dot of glue of your Loctite and that'll hold it on there. If that doesn't happen all the time, um, let me show you some other examples here. Here's a pendant that I made and that is in there very solid. That's not gonna move. Um, let me show you some other pieces. Here is a butterfly shaped bezel. And that one's in there too. That one's not gonna, that one's not gonna budge. We did some rectangular bezels and here we added a texture to the top of the clay. Here's another rectangle one. Here we just did some swirls. Okay. Um, so this one, it does want to come apart, but that can be easily glued. So here we make a hole. Let me just separate them for now until I... Okay, reassemble these just for now. And now we can put a jump ring down in the bottom. We can put a jump ring at the top. And then get our ear wire. This is how we're gonna assemble. And then we have this funky little tassel. So you can buy all sorts of fun tassels and you can also make your own. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do. So this is a piece of chain. Michael sells all kinds of different uh, chain link styles. This is called a curb chain. Just FYI, the way that those links lay together. And um, what you wanna do is get a little wire cutter and you wanna cut some pieces of chain. And I showed this in an earlier class. And in that class, I did not measure the chain. What you can do is you can count the number of chain links, 10, 13, 15, whatever it is, however many you want. I tend to not roll that way because I tend to just jump in and start cutting chain using, uh, using like a, a reference. So this first piece that I'm cutting is gonna be my size reference. And now I'm just, it's about an inch. So now I'm just going to eyeball the rest of my pieces. And it's okay if they are not exact because I can give them a haircut later. It's things like this that I, these are the type of uh, crafting corners, I guess, that I like to cut. Um, because, you know, sometimes you do need to cut out some, some of the more time consuming steps. And I don't like to count individual links of chain, so I just roll with it. <laughs> Let go, just continuing to cut. This is where having some really good jewelry tools comes in handy. All right, so that's five pieces. I'm going to take this jump ring I'm using my pliers. I'm going to open the jump ring. Actually, you know what? I'm going to choose another, a different size. So in jewelry making, you're going to use a lot of jump rings. So I have this like jumbo pack, and it has lots of different sizes in there. I'm going to choose a little bit of a smaller diameter because that will have a smaller um, size. Open that up. And then I want to thread the very first link through here. And this is where you may want to get some uh, magnifying glasses out. <laughs> Let's see if the gods are with me and I can do this with a aha. We just thread all of those on that jump ring. This is how you can just make a custom chain tassel.
and you can make this as chunky as you want. I've added five pieces to mine. You can see kind of the size of that. I'm going to close this for now. Let me start assembly. So we have all of our pieces. We just need to assemble. First thing, I'm going to go through the hole that I did earlier. Now, if I was doing this at home, I would glue this and take the time to let that glue dry. But um, I want to get through this project with you guys. So I'm going to pretend that that is glued. You pick up my my tassel put that on this jump ring close this up all right the bottom part's done i need another jump ring for the top by the way this process of using jump rings opening and closing them you can make chain mail that way that's how chain mail is made oops um and doing that about 10 million times gets you a chainmail suit. Okay, so here is our version of this earring with the black instead of the bright colors. And customer, I mean, in polar clay, colors are endlessly customizable. And then the last thing we have to do is add that UV resin to the top. And I wanted to get that jump ring in place before I added the, the UV resin. So let's, let's go ahead and add that. Uh, and I'm gonna show you a little trick here. So the way this earring is laying on my work surface, it is not even. So this jump ring is kind of pushing it up. So I do want to even that out. So I'm using just a leftover piece of clay underneath here so that I can get a level surface. Okay. And I'm not getting my level out. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Because when I pour this UV resin on there, it's going to flow like any liquid. All right, a little dot. You don't need a lot. And then go in with a toothpick or a wood stick, and we're going to bring this to the edges. And I want to bring it right to the frame, to the metal frame, but not enough that it's going to pour over the side. And you can see how just that one drop does the job. Let's bring our light in and let that cure. All right, we are wrapping up here. Um, I have another project to show you, and I have actually a lot of things over here to the side that I wanna show you just as inspiration. So we talked at the beginning of the class about creating something and then turning it into multiple different things. So that's what I wanna, wanna show you. So let's move this out of the way. Well, that is cooking. So this is a piece, this is a baked piece of polymer clay. Before I put it in the oven, I stuck a little rhinestone in there and just baked that rhinestone directly into the in the oven. So now I have something, what am I gonna do with it? Well, I can do a lot of different things. I can turn it into an earring using the traditional way that I just showed you. I can turn it into something like this. I can turn it into an earring using the stud method, putting a stud on the back of this, and now it's a stud earring. I can turn it into a pin, like for your jean jacket. Do people still put pins on jean jackets? Um, and this is another finding available at Michael's that I would just glue onto the back, and now I've turned that into a little pin. If I wanna turn it into a brooch, this one's a little large for this shape, but this is the finding that you need to create any type of a brooch. And if you wanted to make a hair clip, here's the finding that you need. This is a flat top alligator clip and you can glue that on here. Maybe you could stack up a few of them here. So 
Let me show you some inspiration. Here's that same clay pattern that we've been working with. We just cut a rectangle out of clay and then glued it on an alligator clip. And we have a custom, very modern looking hair clip. And I have another example of that. A few more examples of that, actually. Lots of different hair clips that we've made here using the pattern clay. Um, and then in terms of jewelry making, it's always a good idea to invest in good findings. So this metal piece here is a finding. Uh, this is one of my favorite things to use with polymer clay. This is what it looks like in the store. And we have cutters that match this exactly so that you can cut a piece of polymer clay, bake it, and then attach it to that finding and it just elevates. It elevates the overall design. Here's another example of that. And here is a, another example of that using a different shape. You can see how this looks like an earring that you would buy in a fancy boutique. And that is because I believe of the findings. Here's another example. So after you bake it, sometimes all it needs is one bead as an accent. So here's just one regular seed bead that turns these cactus earrings into something special in a contrasting color. So I really like that one. Here's an earring that we just made. Um, in fact, we made that cactus earring and this earring in a Southwest jewelry class a couple weeks ago. And in this earring, we have added a bead here, a tassel here, and the whole thing together, it creates a whole look. So I love that one. Um, and then in terms of earring design, we can take three of the same shapes, stack them together and make that into an earring. We can take two different shapes, stack them together to make an arch like that. Um, we can take just solid polymer clay and here we've added a texture. I wasn't able to cover texture in this class, but that comes from these texture sheets. And we have um, uh, lots of classes actually on using these texture sheets. If you go to Michael's YouTube, you'll find those. And we also do these classes um, a few times a month. So definitely come back and we'll show you how those, those are used. But so these are just examples of what you can do with the clay once you have baked it. Let's get back to our earring here. So this went for a minute. I really would let it go for two minutes. After a minute, it's not um, sticky anymore. I mean, it's really, let me just remove that from the back. And this is what we have. And I can take a look at that tassel and see if it needs a haircut on any of those. I mean, that's pretty good, uh, but I can cut off the last link if any of them are long. And that is how you make a beautiful shiny earring. Um, so we are just wrapping it up here. And as we do, I'll remind you to check us out on michaels.com and the classes and events page that is always being updated with new classes. Um, and I will bring some of our things in here that we made. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I hope that we inspired you to check out polymer clay crafting and jewelry crafting in general. And I hope that we see you back here on the next one. Hey, Thanks Stephanie. a lot so much. Stephanie, uh -huh. before you, before you uh, sign off, there is a quick question. If you can um, uh, talk on it, uh, someone opened up a package of clay and mm -hmm. it's kind of um, uh, rather dry and hard to work with. Mm -hmm. I just wonder if you have any tips for them. Yeah, sure. So is it, I'm not sure if it was the pattern clay um or not if it so let me handle the question uh both ways so if it's pattern clay and it's dry um you can put it in a little bit of warm water to kind of warm it up before you craft with it and there are instructions specifically on the temperature of the water and the time and stuff in the package of um uh that, that you bought so that is if you're working with this type of pattern clay um, you can put it in water. If you're working with solid clay and it is a little dry, 
then you just need to condition it with your hand. So let me give you an example of that. So here is just some solid clay. And it is, well, this isn't super dry, um, but it can be, especially the colors that are white or chalky can be more dry. And you just have to condition those. Just work them with your hands until you'll feel the clay will get um, warm and supple. And that's how you deal with um, how you deal with any type of dry clay. Pattern clay, you don't want to condition it because it'll ruin the pattern. Um, so you can put it in hot water, warm water, not hot water, warm water um, for a few minutes. And then solid clay, if it's dry, just mush it around and condition it with your hands. I hope that answered your question. Thank you so much. Any other questions before we go? That's the only one I saw. Oh, awesome. You guys made it to the end. Thank you so much for joining us. And we hope to see you next time.